Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting edition of Jimmy Who Plays. Today we are trying out a game called Everlasting Summer. I have no idea what it's about, I just know it was free on the Steam Network. Alright, so let's try it out and let's have fun. Okay, I was having that dream. because doing the female voices messes with me. Who keeps asking me? Will you come with me? Come. But where? And why? And where am I anyways? Of course, it will all have happened in her life. Of course, if it all would have happened in real life, I would, have, I would have certainly been scared. This much is sure. But this is just a dream. The same one I see every night. There must be a reason. You don't have to know where or why to realize something is really happening. Something desperate for my attention. Since everything that surrounds me here is real. As real as things in my own flat, I can open the gates, hear the hinges creak, brush the crumbling rust away with my hand, inhale the fresh, cool air and shiver from the cold. I cruise. Ah, okay, I could, but to do that, I would, I would need to pick myself up, make a step, move my hand. But this is a dream. would change my understanding. Because here, it's just like we're on the other side of the crashing, of the crackling side of an old TV, which, uh, which struggles to fight against the static noise and strive to show its audience everything without missing a single detail. But the picture is getting blurry. I must be waking up soon. Ask her something. The girl. What's her name? About the stars, for instance. Why the stars, though? I'd rather ask about the gates. Yes, the gates. She would be so surprised. Or better, why don't I ever call the title? But dot. I was J. Called the super script dot. I'm pretty sure this is a Russian game, so if I slaughter this and there are Russian people watching, I apologize so much for some of the things. Nice letters, as if they don't ex as if they don't exist anymore. Still, what do letters, gates, and the stars have to do with this place? Because if every night I'm having this dream, which will be forgotten soon anyways, I've got to look for answers here and now. There, if you look carefully, you can see the magellic clouds, as if I ended up in the southern hemisphere. In a dream, there are small things that catch, catch the most of your attention, unnatural colors of grass, impossible curves of straight lines, or your own distorted reflection. While the real danger, which could put an end to everything right here and now, seems trivial, trifling. It's natural, since here you cannot die. I know it's, I know it for sure. I've done it hundreds of times. But if you cannot die, is there a point of living? I should ask the girl. She's a local. She should know. Yes, exactly. I should ask her about the owl, for instance. What strange bird it is. No, it doesn't matter. Will you come with me? And every time I have to answer, it's the only way, otherwise the dream will never end. Uh, 
it's the, it's the only way. Otherwise, the dream will never end. I will never wake up. Oh, okay. So we're, we're up with the first. Honestly, this game is kind of sad so far. I don't know. Maybe it's the music, but it's kind of putting me in a melancholy mood. But you know what? Presented that opportunity. Asking me if I would go with her, even if it's in a dream, I'd say yes. Yes, I will come with you. Every time it's so hard to decide on the answer. Where am I? What am I doing here? Who is she? And why does so much in my life depend on this answer? Or maybe it doesn't. It's a dream after all. Just a dream. typing without touching the keyboard. Um, impressive if I do say so myself. <laughs> I know that website. Alright, let's see here. Oh, so he is on the Russian equivalent of 4chan. And on Missoula Firefox. Right. <clears throat> the computer screen stared at me as if it was alive. Sometimes it really did seem to me that it was the conscious it was conscious of itself, it had its own thoughts and wishes, ambitions, that it had feelings, could love and suffer. As if, in our relationship, the screen wasn't an instrument, it was me. Lifeless piece of plastic and textile. There is some truth in that, probably because the computer provides 90% of my communication with the outside world. Anonymous image boards, some chats from, chats from time to time, rarely I see J or Jabber, and forms with even more rare even in even more rarely I just I'm sorry I just love the fact that it's lazy town because I can't get over the fact that she turned out to be a prostitute sorry anyways getting back to the story people on the other side of the internet cable simply do not exist they're simply creations of its sick imagination an error in the source code or kernel bug which started out which started a living which started living a life of its own dude your apartment sucks if one looked at my existence from the other side, such thoughts would seem so mad, and a psychologist would surely give me a bunch of so sophisticated diagnoses and maybe write me a doctor's referral to an asylum. Just looking around the room. A small apartment with no trace of repair or semblance of order in it, and always the same view at the window on, of the gray metropolis running somewhere day and night. Such are the conditions of my life. You know what? Honestly, I kind of feel bad for the guy so far. But, hey, um, that's all the time I have for this, this one. So, anyway, stay frosty. Um, and I should be posting more videos again here soon.